Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask, so I'll tell you. They said to me in a vein his messenger and they said to me in a destiny to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And of course, I like working with angels, the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Lauren Dickinson. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching this show live at a later date, as it means a lot to Lauren and me. Um, to connect with like-minded people. Now, if you'd ever met me before, then my name is Ray and I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy and a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, create your future and transform your present. To expand your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, get clear and clarity on your next steps and take charge of your destiny so that you can take charge of your destiny and fulfill your purpose in this lifetime. Now, each episode of this show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Lauren Dickinson, about being created to create. Now, Lauren is an international award-winning visionary multimedia artist and teaches artists and non-artists alike how to tap into their innate creativity and birth their creative genius into the world. Her unique shamanic art therapy process provides clients with deep and profound self-guided journeys into their inner being to self-heal and express themselves from inside out. Lauren is the founder and CEO of Orion, Orion Retreats, a transformational retreat company that creates bespoke retreat experiences to enliven the spirit, empower guests to live their lives on purpose and awaken their divinity. Now, her studies have included professional certification and studies in core synchro, synchro, synchronism, get my teeth fixed, at the New Mexico School of uh, Natural Therapeutics, Reiki as a master practitioner in the Yusai lineage, um, Alpha Biotics at the Alpha Biotic Training Academy, professional coach training from the World Coach Institute, metaphysical studies from the University of the Metaphysical Sci Sciences, biogenerics, shamanism and the enneagram with the chestnut pays enneagram academy which i'm sure she's going to uh, pronounce properly when she when she um, actually comes on to talk now with a well-rounded and practical knowledge base in a wide variety of applications lauren skillfully and coactively facilitates a greater expression of life energy healing and personal awareness and growth with her clients she is deeply drawn to sacred energy centers of the earth, including having lived in Sedona, Arizona, and spending time with the Aboriginal tribe in Uluru, Australia. She currently lives in Mount Shasta, California, considered the root chakra of the world, and Sedona and Mount Shasta are two places I really want to go. Now, Lauren knew at an early age that she wanted to help people in the form of energetic hands-on healing. She started her formal studies in coaching and energy healing as a young adult, leading to a lifelong pursuit and quest to facilitate soulful healing and its high expression for her clients. So I'm looking forward to hearing all about that. So without further delay, hello, Lauren, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks, Ray. Thank you for having me. This is a, a beautiful, beautiful show to be a part of. Brilliant. And I do apologize for my tripping up at my tongue. <laughs> You're great. That was a lot of information. <laughs> that was. <laughs> so before we get into this fascinating conversation, you know, and I didn't even cover half of what I know you can talk about. I want to remind you that only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Lauren and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Lauren, why don't you tell us more about your journey and how we are created to create? Thank you. Um, this was a realization that came to me through my own kind of healing creative process. Um, I knew early on like I was, um, that, like you were saying that I wanted to work with people. I wanted to help people. Um, I was really drawn to energy in working with people, but I didn't know what that was. Um, I had my first healing arts experiences when I was like 10 and 11 years old with a practitioner that my father used to take all of his siblings to. And that kind of like got me started a little bit, but I didn't really realize what that was until um, both I, as a young adult, 18, 19, I was like, okay, Reiki, this is what I want to do. You know, I really want to experiment with this. And then I went into art school as well. 
And through a process of a lot of family stuff, um, I ended up having to leave art school and through some you know, personal losses, um, I lost all my creativity. So my journey um, then going into the healing arts instead of the art world um, is that it, I, I tried picking up the brush multiple times and getting creative again, but because of like the trauma that I'd been through, I, I couldn't. And so, but my path through the healing arts world and learning all these modalities actually helped me to balance my brain and get access back to the, my right side of my brain again through, yes, healing arts, but then it was like, there was a very cool scientific process to it. Um, in retrospect, and that allowed me to heal what needed to be healed so that it opened up my creativity again. So then it was just like this big, like, like wellspring of creativity that came back into my life. And through the process of combining creativity with this healing, you know, that I'd been through, I did create that shamanic art process. Um, and it made me realize that, you know, as we heal the brain and, and get out of the reptilian brain and the limbic system of the brain and go into the neocortex, that's where um, the higher vibrations of like love and harmony exist and higher consciousness. So the more that we can be a part of our creative process consciously, the more that we can tap into our ability to be a creator and co-create our reality, co-create our lives and our thoughts, you know, and really just kind of transform ourselves through the creative process. Wow, that's amazing. And lucky to have, uh, um, you know, a dad who actually took you to, you know, do healing and stuff like that when, when you were a kid, you know, there's, yeah. there's, I think there's more children now, but I'm guessing, well, I know when I was a child and I'm a lot older than you, um, but, I, but I'm guessing that it, it was something unique. Definitely, definitely. And I'm very grateful my dad was open to all of that. It was a very meta metaphysical process. And I ended up learning the process myself, which was the process that ended up healing me the most and allowing me to tap into my creativity more. So I'm very grateful that my dad was just a unique person and the modality was very, very, very unique um, to the point where it's like it was a part of all this metaphysical process as well as the just the pure healing aspect of the body. Yeah, no, that's that's amazing. So what was this particular healing that, uh, um, that, that it was? Was it one of those that I mispronounced? Well, you actually were on spot with that one. It was um, <laughs> antibiotics. <laughs> it's a way of balancing the brain and allowing the cerebral spinal fluid through the process. Like one of the results of it is the cerebral spinal fluid has uh, freer access through the spine, which, you know, the cerebral spinal fluid we know is luminous fluid. And so that when it goes through your body, like that activates your light body. Now they get, it's really scientific and it's into the brain stuff and it can be really physiologically oriented. But we also, all of us as, as practitioners, we acknowledge it's a metaphysical spiritual process because you are coming out of your reptilian survival mode brain into the higher core, you know, neocortex of the brain. Um, and it's it's pretty transforming for the people that um, get to experience it. There's not yeah. enough that practice it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it's not it's not one I've actually heard of before. So uh, so of course I'm now going to be going and looking that because every time I hear something about something new, I'm kind of like, okay, let me do some research on that. <laughs> Beautiful. And because uh, I love all I love all you know any healing modalities that I love to go in and and find out you know especially if they're um, you know they're connected to the brain as well. Yeah, I'm very I'm very much into uh, how how our brains work. Yeah. Well, you're in the consciousness, so that makes sense, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So how did you realize that your creativity was um, coming coming back? And why? And I know you said you had trauma, but what do you think was particular about the trauma that stopped your creativity? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, for one, um, the trauma itself, it was that my dad had passed away. And so uh, part of that on a personal level was like, well, you know, I just stopped doing a lot of things because it was the grief, but also like I was questioning whether or not I was doing art for my dad. Um, I, I didn't think that consciously at the time, but in retrospect, I've thought of that. Um, and I was just so like just grief stricken and the trauma itself, like I was there when he passed away. So the trauma itself got me stuck into, I, I feel like that beta high stress response, PTSD, like I was stuck there for a really long time. So both having that brain balance um, modality help, but then also the, just the whole healing path of like healing your emotions, healing your spiritual, you know, psyche and, and healing, you know, your body in different ways. It's all connected. Um, so that was that was a huge part of that. Um, and then one day, like kind of 
one day I'd, I'd been on this path for like, oh gosh, I want to say like four or five years, just all healing, all training, all the things I could do because, of, you know, we, we tend to want to give to others what we need ourselves. So I was a big into like making sure like everyone else around me was like healed and good and doing all their stuff because I needed it too. <laughs> yeah. But um, I had been on that path for a while and um, I had been carrying around like my like tote, my little like uh, what do you call it? like a toolbox full of like paints and brushes from art school and i had some blank canvases and i just been like i'm always going to get back to that and and um i just been carrying around for so long and i finally like decided one day i'm going to do this and so i picked up a blank canvas i all my brushes were like old of course and dried up but i just couldn't like stand to throw them away so i picked up a palette knife um, that I had. And I had an idea in my mind of what I wanted to create, like an art school. We learned how to do everything very technical and stuff, but I knew I was out of practice. So I'm like, I'm just going to see how this goes. So I pick up a palette knife and I start putting down this very beautiful, like azure blue color for the background of like this elephant. I think it was an elephant that I wanted to do. And as I'm laying down this, you know, this beautiful blue color with the palette knife, it started to create kind of this really unique texture. I'm like, well, that's really pretty. And so I kept kind of kept doing them like, oh, maybe this elephant's going to have some red. So I started to try and put some red in and like, wait a minute. And just the, the way that the texture was laying down and like the contrast between the two, I'm like, I'm just going to stick with this. And I kept putting down a bunch of color and it turned into abstract art. And so that was my first process. And I was not an abstract artist. I never even thought about that. Like in school, like it's all technical, like you need to build your skills to technically as a figurative artist or surrealist. And so this was just kind of opened up a whole new world and I didn't have any objection or any like objectives to it. I didn't have any agenda. I just, every single day, I just started putting down color and color, color, and it turned into a thriving career. You know, I've been in um, uh, international ex exhibitions, local ex exhibitions, um, commissioned work. Um, it just really opened up everything for me when I was in Dallas and I, cannot be more grateful for the process. And as I kind of reemerged into my purpose as a artist, it really made me anchor into that idea that, you know, when we tap into that through the healing in our brain, but then also the creativity, like we're here to create. And I was able to consciously be like, okay, this is what I want for my life. And then it would come. This is what I want to create for my life. And it would come. And it kind of get, got me into that process of really realizing that we can create the reality around us. Yeah, that's absolutely amazing um, that, that you kind of like got back into that. And then that the actual physical stuff actually tapped into, um, uh, either, you know, more on the outside stuff to bring that um, in into you. So, you, you know, you because you've 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 lived obviously in the, well, you live in a spiritual place now and you lived in a spiritual place. So, so was it only when you were a child or did you or did Sedona call you when you were on that spiritual journey? That's great. Um, a little bit of both. So I was late 20s, early 30s when I got the call to be there. Um, and I did move. I had been on the, the healing path for a bit, but I was I was still a dabbler. I wasn't sure that, that was my purpose. I wasn't sure if I could do that as a career, you know, and, and have that as like my dharma. But I knew I really wanted to. But I moved there because it was a really neat place. I had an opportunity to move there, but also it was closer for me to take this alphabetic training in Dallas because I could fly a lot easier because it was like having a long distance, like one weekend a month. So my intention was to go to that program while I was in Sedona. Um, a lot of stuff happened there on a personal level. My brother passed away um, almost immediately. Um, so it didn't turn into what I thought it was going to be, but it was exactly what I needed it to be. And I was like... You know, death is such a strange thing, but it, it rocked my world, which is so no one's supposed to do anyway, but I just didn't think it was going to be in that form. Um, so I lived there for about five years. Um, the death of my brother really threw me off for a while. So I thought that I was going to go there and start a Reiki practice and do all the stuff. But then I just like I, that again, I probably got me into that survival mode again, where I just didn't, I couldn't create from that space. So I started working for a natural path. I stayed on kind of like that, that healing path, but also but working for others and getting that kind of admin career experience. Um, and I, in retrospect, like I hiked every day, like I really like absorbed all the energies that was there, but I didn't, I don't feel like I fully like, you know, maximized my time there because I was so like dis distracted with other things, but I ended up moving to Dallas from Sedona to take the training that I wanted to do in the alphabetics. And I ended up working for the, the um, academy itself. So that was a really cool kind of synchronicity of how that all 
all happened. But in retrospect, like every once in a while, I get I get called to live in Sedona again, um, and we'll see. But I didn't I didn't feel like I had enough time there. So there's definitely some more karma that I have there. Yeah, yeah, no, and that's the thing I th I think, and um, what uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that when you get called to certain places in the world, there's a reason why you're called yeah. to be there, and it will reveal to you what it needs to reveal at that time. And until you uh, finish that journey of what you need to know and what you need to work within you, it's um, it's kind of like really difficult to never go there again or to actually take people um down there you know because obviously I run retreats down in Glastonbury but I wasn't able to do that until the 20 odd years I'd done all the work myself mm. going down there and it revealed to me what I needed to know and even now when I take people down there again every time is different because it will only allow me to show the people that are with me what they need at that moment in time and so another group, it'll be it'll be it'll be something else. So it, I like the way um, places, you know, do that. And obviously, you know, where did the idea of um, running retreats and actually uh, bespoke retreats come from? Yeah, well, it's funny that you say that because now I do run a series of retreats in Sedona, and I feel like I can be of better service to both to the people in the land, having gone through even the last like ten years of not being in Sedona, you know, and going through the work myself. So now I can bring people there. Um, but the idea came when I was in Dallas. Um, it kind of came together. Like I always knew I wanted to do like group stuff, but I didn't quite know how. I'd I'd been through coach training at that point already, but I didn't quite know like my niche or what I wanted to do with that. I just kept learning until I figured it out. It's what kind of you know throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks, right? Um, so I I think I had when I was in um, Dallas and having uh, being part of this academy and and being part of this community of of practitioners, I really started to have visions of like taking people, whether it was this association or taking students or you know, groups of people who wanted this healing modality in like a capsule in a container around these different places where they can just like kind of unplug from their life for a minute, go through this in intensive um, therapeutic process and then come out and not just like have like a one time shot at this. You know, I think, you know, everyone knows that healing is a process and it takes time. But also I wanted to create like, you know, enough of like a significant difference between the first visit and like the, the end goal to like so that they could like kind of expand into that that space right so um that was the planting of the seed when i came up here to mount shasta um i worked with a retreat company for a little while and so you know it's this is like the second stone on mount shasta everything's spiritual here like a lot of people were doing guided tours around the mountain and the mountain itself which i have my own story about has completely transformed my life um, and I wanted to share that. And I finally kind of anchored into this idea that, well, I want to share Mount Shasta with people. I want to share my journey. I want to share what I've been through, but it's not about me. I want to really like create something unique and custom for like the people that are, that I would be bringing here. So when I, after about a year that I've been here, it really anchored into me that like, I want to create transformational experiences for people so that they can experience the land and it, it kind of removed me both like me, I can provide that, but it removed me from the equations. Like, well, cause I always had self doubt as a healer. Like, can I be the one to help somebody? And that, is that narcissistic to think that I can help somebody? And like, I don't, I don't necessarily always believe in using the term healer because that, that puts you in the middle when it's not, it's like the healing comes from source and it comes from um, energy outside of ourselves that we can open up to. So that kind of took care of that for me, that the land itself is going to create exactly what each person is needed whether it's Sedona whether it's Mount Shasta and now I you know have grown my my um vision that it's going to be all these sacred areas around the world or it's going to be not sacred area everything is sacred because we're sacred and so that was a huge shift and I just can't wait to share it with more people yeah no that that's amazing and of course you will have to do something in um, Glastonbury because it's the heart chakra of the world at the moment so I know <laughs> <laughs> no it kind of moves around a little bit but yeah I want it yeah to you want to be there yeah yeah it's uh, like yeah i can't get to sedona or manchester but i can get to Glastonbury fairly easily so uh um, yeah. so, so i've it's got my own little place <laughs> <laughs> as well as other places there are in in, yeah. in the country so so the, the so the treat sort of like came along um so mm -hmm. how does the artistry work with the retreats and with your healing as well because it's kind of like do you keep them all separate do you amalgamate them how does it kind of like work 
Great question. Thank you. Um, I have come into the understanding that my, because sometimes I don't know until I create it. This is the whole thing about being a, a creative is like you, you go with your instincts and you go with your intuition and you figure out what the end goal is as you're, as you're creating this. So I have found that this has been an amalgamation of, yes, personal development of creativity and art, and then also just um, putting people in a space where they can heal. So it's coming to the point where it's like, what I really want to teach and what I, the container that I want to create for people is that they come into contact with their own divinity as a creator. I feel truly that we, we are made in the image and likeness of a creator, whether you call it God, creator, source, universe, like that's, that's the power that we have to co-create a reality. So whether they turn that into finding their dharma or their life purpose, or they turn that into being a creative and creating their artwork, we're all creators. So if you put people into that environment where they can, have transformational experiences through the healing process, brain balance through clearing, you know, debris from the psychic body, um, or psyche aura, whatever you want to call it. There's many you know, words for it, but then they can come into that understanding for themselves and then create whatever it is they want to create. Um, I will be doing um, like more like creativity specific, like art or creating something, um, artist retreats, art retreats for not non-artists, um, which is going to be huge really, really cool experience. Like I already have like a ton of plans for that. Um, but again, it's not going to be exclusive to that because we're all creators. And, and if somebody wants to go through this personal development through the Enneagram or this shamanic coaching process where they figure out that they want to create a new company, they want to create a new product, a new business, like that's what I want to help them tap into and to really realize. And if they don't, if they're not want to create something on, on a bigger scale, they're creating a life for themselves. So really like owning that like presence into themselves that they can create what they want and give them the container and the space to figure out what that is. Cool. And where did the shamanism come in? Where, where were you when that came in? Yeah. Um, I, my first, first experience was when I was, um, how old was I? I'm, I'm you're testing my memory here. <laughs> I think it was like 23 or 24. No, 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 no. It was the first, it was before I had my Reiki. So, um, I was 21, 22, working in a chiropractic office, which I worked for for a number of years through different chiropractors. Um, I had a client who came in who was a shamanic psychotherapist. And um, he, I was working mostly part-time for this a chiropractic office, and we were just talking one day while he was waiting for his adjustment, um, mentioned that he was hiring for somebody, and I was looking for extra work. So I, he, I ended up... Um, applying to kind of help him with like his insurance billing and front desk. And he um, gifted me. He's like, I think you'd be really good at Reiki. I think you should do this. And we'd had a lot of conversations about shamanism and I was just really intrigued by it. So he actually purchased me um, as a gift, my first Reiki attunement. So that kind of put me on the path. But then also I've always like kind of held that like shamanic, you know, like that's really interesting. I'm going to come back to that. Over the years I had looked at um, Alberto Villoro. Is that how you say his last name? Um, and the um, Deer Foundation, and then there's the other shamanic studies course. I can't remember the, the institute, but there were a number of programs that I've been looking at over the years while I'm doing all this physical stuff. I knew I wanted to come back to shamanism. Um, Harner, that was his name. Yeah, Dr. Harner, his, his institute. Anyway, um, so I knew I always wanted to come back to it, and I wanted to include a lot of um, like kind of psycho spiritual work into the physical work. I just knew that that was going to come later. And so when I moved to Mount Shasta, um, one of the retreat companies that I did work with, um, I worked with a shaman for a while and helped him, them put on their retreats and took a shamanic shaman. He called it a shamanistic Reiki course. And that was like my first like hands-on practical experience with working with shamanism. And it, it was really powerful. Like I really learned like, well, you know, there, there's shamanism and you can you go and study in the jungles for like years and years and years, but, or you can also like learn from somebody who's done that. And in the, in the modern term of shamanism is changing and I don't never consider myself a shaman, but to know that it's still the same process of a psycho spiritual, you're helping people heal with energy work and energy medicine, and then combining it with the Reiki, like doing this, you know, extraction work within replacing it with Reiki. It was very, very, very uh, pivotal for me. And so, I continued my studies. I um, got 
all these different kinds of books. I will probably get a certification just because I like certifications. It's not necessary, but I like them because it makes me feel like I've I've gone to the deeper level to really learn these things. Um, and I've built um, a good steady client base um, doing remote shamanism um, and really like really taking all the tools I've learned in energy medicine and applying it to soul retrieval and really tapping into the consciousness and helping people um, also through shamanic coaching prep practice where I can combine my coaching energy work and then also like have the intuitive insights and to see what the client needs in that moment. Um, it's kind of been an amalgamation and creation of my own as well, but a lot of different tools, but it really kind of anchored in here in Mount Shasta. And there's a lot of uh, Native American, um, you know, type of healers around here. And I have Native American in my, in, in my lineage, in my heritage. So I felt like a really strong connection to doing this work. Oh, that's absolutely that's absolutely beautiful and the fact you ended up in Manchester as well um and sort of like things sort of like started um uh, sort of like amalgamating and coming and coming together there so the one I couldn't pronounce any any yeah what is that <laughs> beautiful um it's it's I've recently found it in the last I want to say well introduced to it in the last two years officially I'd kind of known about it but it's always one of those ones like I'm going to come back to you. Like all these things interest me and I always have to like prioritize, but it is a type of like, it's, it's like a personality system, but it's so much more than just like a personality. It's like, there's like human design is a type of system, you know, numerology, astrology, there's so much to it to just to say it's a personality thing is just like skipping the surface, but it's basically with the understanding that there's nine main personalities and then there's three subtypes for each one. So it's it's it shows you kind of like your journey through. Um, it's like a it's a mystical system. So it so it shows you your journey through like your soul evolution. Um, and it was it has roots in like ancient Egypt, um, Sufism, which really drew me because my my spiritual practice is based in Sufism. So it really drew me to that aspect of it, that it's like somebody discovered this. They didn't create it. They discovered these patterns to the universe and these patterns to the cosmos and humanity and human potential. And they've kind of basically refined it into this like 3D model of soul growth. And so I was introduced to it from a friend who was really into it. And we did some coaching and I was just like, I love this. Um, and I've totally dove into it um, quite a bit this last year. And then as I kind of came more into my healing practice and shamanism and then these retreats um i've really like decided and um got um basically registered myself for that cp enneagram school which is like one of the gold standards of learning because there's a lot of people that can be into something but that if you're going to use it as a coaching modality you know it's for me it was really important to make sure that i i, I was learning from from the right people who had the right kind of professional system for this and so i just started um in december going on the professional track and the way that I've slowly been able to bring it into like my coaching program with some of my clients has been really transformational because then it's like you have that much more of a deeper understanding of their process, of their evolution, of what tools might be able to help them. Um, like, like assessing a nine, I'm a nine in the Enneagram, which is very much a mediator. It's, it's a little bit selfless, a little bit too much selfless. So like you give more than you get, but it's also a way of hiding from yourself. So as a healer, that was really important for me, like, or not as a healer, as a practitioner and being in this world, like, like I realized like, yeah, I give all these things to other people because I also need it myself. But it's also a way for me to avoid my own suffering and avoid my own pain through what I've been through. So that was a huge growth spurt for me. So if I was to work with somebody on that level, like I and know their type, then I would know, okay, this is what they're going to need versus somebody who is like a three, for example, they're very much about achievement and look at me and look at all these things I can do, but it's not coming from a narcissistic place necessarily. It's coming from a place where they don't feel worthy of having that. So they overcompensate by putting on this big show but because they deeply, deeply need a little bit more of like a, you are worthy as you are, not for what you accomplish. So it helps you really kind of create like a model of transfer transformation for clients on a deeper level um, than anything else that I've also learned. So it's like, it's a lot. I think I've just like combined a lot of different things into <laughs> one path. <laughs> as you know, that's, but, but I think that's the way, you know, thing, things work. You, you know, I started one thing, then something else came in and then something else. And then you just, it just, I think it's the synchronicities. It's just when you're open to learning that, 
the ones that are meant to stay with you will amalgamate into the other ones so you can work them all all together and those that don't fit into that were there as a background as a basis that aren't necessarily what you would use now because they were just there as that kind of like stepping stone that push to get you into where into where into where you're going so yes yeah. yes <laughs> yeah um and i'm definitely going to be checking out both those uh, different things because there's two things i've never heard about and i'm like yep let me go and do, and do, some, <laughs> do some research now because I, I love finding I love finding out new uh, healing modalities and and everything like that. So do you so obviously the re, the treat the retreats? Um, do you actually run the retreats yourself, or do you organise them for other people? Um, you know, how does it work with that? Yeah, thank you. Um, I do both. So I started out doing um, you know planning a lot of retreats that I would be a facilitator at, and then I would was bringing on a team of other facilitators that we started doing it together. It has transformed into because I've been in marketing for a long time in business and you know being an admin for all these different like chiropractors, massage clinics, wellness centers. Um, it turned into which I wasn't necessarily planning on, but I'm really excited about it. It turned into me also doing retreat planning. Um, earlier in the year, I had taken like a mastermind um, retreat planning course for me, for what I thought was going to be like my, you know, how to put on my retreats and, and help my other facilitators. But I turned into like, I was good at it. I enjoyed it. And then it turned into a couple people asked me, well, can you help me plan mine? And then it turned, you know, as, as a facilitator themselves, um, without me being a part of that process. And I was like, yes, because I know a lot of my dharma is to help other people fulfill their dharma. So if I can be the marketing backbone, um, you know, connect them to the team of the other facilitators and have an affiliate network, if I can help them just show up and create um, their content and create their retreat from the inspired place rather than having to deal with all this headache stuff. Like, again, this was me doing what I would have needed. Like when I was starting out, like I would have loved to have somebody help me with the business aspect so I can show up and have a practice or have this retreat. Um, so I thought I just felt like really strongly called to be part of that process to support other people in doing that. So that's taken off quite a bit. And and I'm making sure that I put in retreats that I'm going to be facilitating um, there. I have three on my schedule for this year, which is really exciting. I only had one the first year because I was figuring it out and still trying to like do, you know, do a lot of um, do the transition from like my regular marketing work to this. And then also. Um, uh, making sure that I wasn't doing it all for all of the other facilitators, but putting myself in the process too. But basically we just built a team of facilitators and now we're kind of, we can do bespoke ones where you hire us and you say, cause I have a catering person, like a, a you know, cooking gastronomy part. I have a team of facilitators and corporate stuff and retreat venue partners. So if someone can come in and be like, Hey, I want to do a corporate retreat for this type of transformation for my company. I get, okay, here's this facilitator. Here's this facilitator. Here's our chef. Here's our venue present them with a package and see if they want to do that. And also just bring on individual facilitators and help them fulfill their, yeah, fulfill their dharma for what they want to do. And then I get to be a part of it too, you know? That's absolutely amazing. A beautiful thing to do, um, you, you know, to be able to help others on on their journey to, uh, to fulfill their dharma in this lifetime. So absolutely um, amazing for that. So how do you find time to see clients? <laughs> <laughs> that has slowed down for sure. <laughs> um, also, I, I had an office here in town for a little bit and um, I decided, uh, and I, then when I moved into a space where I could have a home practice, I saw clients here a little bit and I decided, um, I think I moved into like my sixth year, which in numerology is all about the home and like a nest and space. And I decided to slow down on the in-person and I made my second bedroom instead of um, a, a practice room. I made it my art studio and I, I shifted my practice to online and coaching more than the in-person. Um, now I'm more comfortable where I can do more remote healing and more remote energy work. So I, that fits in with that. Um, but I definitely, I, I don't see, I don't see anybody in person anymore besides the zoom stuff. Um, eventually I will again. Um, I don't know if it'll be here in Mount Shasta. Sometimes I feel like, well, you know, the universe has always like plugged me into where I'm supposed to be. So I was like, kind of, I'm curious, am I supposed to end up in Mount Shasta for the rest of my life? And then I will, you know, put more roots down here. But right now I'm just open to 
wherever that's going to be. And that's also why I wanted to start the retreats is because I didn't want a retreat center necessarily where I had to be tied to something. I wanted to be able to create the same thing, knowing that the universe might move me around and the people are always going to be drawn to where they're supposed to be. And they don't have to make a big shift. They don't have to come and be part of this healing center, you know, for weeks at a time to get this experience, you know, so it makes it more accessible to more people. And that fit my lifestyle because I didn't necessarily want to, you know, I moved around a lot, but I knew that I moved around a lot for a reason because I needed to have that sense of detachment so that I could be plugged into where I'm supposed to be. Yeah, no, that makes, that makes absolute sense. You know, sort of like I've done a, you know, I've, I've done a lot of stuff around, but my, my thing will be that when the right property comes along in the right area, that's when I'll settle down and run my retreat property from, yeah. from there, but not just do my retreats, but other people come in and they can run retreats. Oh, wow. uh, from 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 there as well so you know that's where I'm actually aiming for rather than moving around mm -hmm. is actually to 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 be based so you know it's it's just it's just amazing how you know the way things work it's kind of like yours has gone one way mine's kind of like gone the other way and I think that's so amazing that that all works together um yeah. to give so many different people the opportunities um that they might not that they might not have um you know if we weren't doing things like um, like that. So yeah. as you know, I do angel oracle card readings and guided meditations. And each week I like to ask my guests what they would like me to do. So Laura, would you like me to pull you and everyone watching an oracle card or would you like me to do a mini guided meditation? I love oracle cards. So I would love to have you read for all of us. <laughs> hey, funny enough, I've got them in my hand. <laughs> Very rare I don't have cards anywhere with me. Um, <laughs> you know, that's just one of those things that I do. Um, now, obviously, when I um, do do the cards, I do the cards for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time. Because although I work with the past life stuff, when I take people back to the past, it's to learn and heal from that so they can be fully present. And when I take people to the future, it's so they can see and understand you know, the steps they can take in the future to bring them fully back to the present so they're fully grounded here. So what does Lauren, oh, okay, we'll go with that one then that just wanted to come straight out. <laughs> yep. Beautiful. So uncovering treasure beneath the surface lies great bounty. No way, is that a dragon? That's a dragon. Oh, that is such a huge synchronicity right now. That is like unbelievable. I saw a healer a few weeks ago. He's like, I am, I'm getting this dragon for you. I'm not sure what it is. And I've had this whole path with the dragon the last two weeks. So thank you. Anyway, continue. Ah, <laughs> you're welcome. No, no, they're on the, 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 you know, the dragon's cover. I've actually it's got, I've got a guide meditation that helps you to go and meet your, meet your dragon. Um, so I'm, so I'm covering the same covering. So I'm, I mean, this also ties in with what you've actually been talking about as well. So again, it's confirmation about, um, you know, uh, what, you know, what you're doing and that beneath the surface is that great treasure around the, that when you tap into it, um, you know, it can create so much um, in, in your life for you. So, you know, so it is kind of like saying, you know, you're, you're, you're tapping into that energy now that's uncovering that beauty within people, um, within the way they are. That's allowing their beauty and their bounty to actually come out and show, which is absolutely amazing. And for everyone who's watching, you know, there's treasure to be uncovered. You just need to look beneath the surface, maybe go within, look deeper into something, and you will find that treasure, that beauty there that can help you bring that abundance into your life at this moment in time. So, yeah, it's an absolutely beautiful card to. Uh, to come out and of course it is a dragon and we love dragons wow dragons are just amazing and yeah happy year of the wood dragon you know i know exactly the fact we're in the year of the wood dragon as well and that's one of the things i like about glastonbury as well is they're um, going up to the tour and doing a guided meditation of the tour to go into the tour and meet the dragons of the tour because obviously they've got dragons around beneath the tour okay we're going to do a retreat together <laughs> 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 I, I think I think that's yeah that, that, that's sort of like the retreat that's that's sort of like we're sort of like coming in uh, <laughs> whilst, whilst we're, especially when that card came out so Lauren do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers any last words of wisdom 
I just love that that card was so synonymous with yes, what we've been talking about. It's like awakening to your divinity. Like that's the riches. That's like that's the the gold within is, is finding that you know your your spark and your connection back to source to the the source of life and creation and really like giving yourself permission to access that and then free that and and free the limiting beliefs that think that you deserve anything less than a, a beautiful abundant and fulfilling life you know beautiful thank you so much for that so I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful because I know I definitely have and I'm going to be going off to do some research. <laughs> so Lauren, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Thank you. Um, my website to see all my retreat offerings, um, we have a number of really beautiful offerings for the rest of the year, um, is orionretreats.com. Orion as the constellation and then retreats.com. Uh, my social media handle is the same at Orion Retreats. Um, my uh, my email is in the on the website, but info at Orion Retreats. Um, if anyone wants to take a look at my art, it's Lauren Dickinson Art on Instagram and uh, Facebook. And um, yeah, just get in touch anyway. Like DM me, email me, um, even if it's just to have a conversation or a virtual coffee. I would love to connect with more people who feel called to either be a part of this, you know, team and community that we're building, or come to a retreat or create something new. Beautiful. And what I'll do is um, once the show's uh, uh, finished, I will um, put uh, the actual links that people can just click on it and go straight to uh, straight to your website and your, uh, and your social media. And that. So again, thank you so much, Lauren, for sharing your wisdom. It's been absolutely amazing um, having you on the show. I've really enjoyed the conversation. You too. Thank you so much for having me. This was very beautiful. Nice to connect with you. Ah, oh, wonderful. And of course, if anyone who's watching you are now ready to remember your divine presence and step onto your spiritual multidimensional path, but you feel lost, confused, stuck or alone, then please feel free to reach out and connect with me so we can see where you are now and how you can move forward to actually take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar. And of course, you can receive a free future life regression, free life, future life progression. Uh, recording to discover where you, your destiny is by seeing into your future to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life, as well as a couple of other free gifts by signing up to my email list. And again, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I'd like to invite you to share this video, as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And of course, if you are watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified when the show goes live or I post new guided meditations. As each comment, like, share, subscription really does help. And again, you know, on any social media and Lauren's social media, you know, every time you comment, subscribe, share our, our, our post, it really does help get that message out and it can help. Um, more people so you're part of that butterfly effect of helping more people on their journey and I look forward to seeing you all same time same place next week take care bye